Hey friends, welcome to another episode of Live Boldly with Sarah, brought to you from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, which is where I used to teach. Yes, I was an art teacher at one time here in uh, just outside of Milwaukee, so I feel like I'm coming home. I'm in a hotel, I've been traveling quite a bit. Uh, today I want to talk to you about a story that I gave in my last speaking engagement, and I've been using this story quite a bit actually in the, the engagements that I've been giving, and it's really touching people's lives. It's the one I always ask people afterwards, I'm like, what touched you most? What called to you or what did you hear that was really important and that you needed to hear? And I want to share just a small part of this story because, well, because if you want to hear the whole thing, then you got to hire me to speak. So there you go. Uh, but it, it really impacts people and how they look at life and what they are carrying in this world. Before I dive into that, I want to tell you something that I am learning over the last couple of weeks. Be very cognizant and be very intentional in the rooms that you walk into and how you are in this world, like how you show up. Because since I have been really diving into speaking and I joined a, a really cool community called Impact 11, the people that are in this community and how much that they support and rise you up in your uh, work that you do personally and professionally, it's made all the difference in the world. And it reminds me that, you know, how we show up every single day matters, the energy that we put out, the relationships that we are in, it really, we really do attract also what we are looking for in that way. So be very intentional with the rooms that you were in, the people that you surround yourself by, um, your friendships, if your relationships are not working and if they are not serving you and how you want to be and how you want to show up in this world, take a look at like, do I really want this? Right. And then make some very big decisions and choices in your life. The rooms that you look at that you are, you're like, I want to be in that room, you know, have the courage um, to step into it because what happens is that courage also will create confidence in your life. And when you have confidence in your life, that will shut down the self-doubt every single time. And so be courageous, be brave, go into the rooms that you want to be in, surround yourself by the people that, you know, that you, that lift you up and have those relationships, form those relationships that matter to you. So the story that I gave at this big engagement a couple of days ago, um, and I've been giving this one a couple of times and it's funny to me how much that it impacts people because it impacted me so much. And the story goes like this. Back in 2014, I went um, on a hike with some of my dear friends, um, one being Steve, which remember hashtag create it. He's the one that uh, taught me, like we really dove into, you know, create your life. And so we used to always say hashtag create it, like stop giving excuses or creating excuses and putting up barriers to, you know, to create what you want, right? Like be able to step into the things that matter to you most. So anyhow, so we went on this, um, it was he and his wife and a couple of his friends. We went on a really cool hike in Sequoia National Park, uh, Labor Day weekend, 2014. Almost a year earlier, prior to is when my marriage imploded, collapsed, whatever you want to call it. Um, I had a major life quake. That's what I like to call it um, in my life. And, and I was really in a very dark, deep, not so much fun spot in my life. Uh, I really was experiencing a lot of imposter syndrome, uh, worthiness issues. Um, well, as anybody does when they go through something that traumatic, right? Where like you find out that your life that you thought it was, it all of a sudden is not. And so I was in a very, very sad space in my life. And I didn't share it too much with them. Certainly did not give them the depths of it. Um, they knew something was going on, but they didn't know the depth of what was actually happening. So we're hiking up this mountain, you know, going on this, this insane, awesome hike up to some like five different lakes. And I put my pack down. And when I put my pack down and turned my head, I went to the bathroom, actually. Um, I came back and Steve had taken this huge rock and put it into my pack and I didn't notice it. So I put my pack on, I keep hiking up this mountain and we stopped for a snack or lunch or something. And I put my hand into the pack to grab something to eat. And I pulled out this rock. So this happened quite a few times on this trail, and I'm not going to give you all the details. That's something I give in the speaking engagement. Um, but we kept hiking, and he had done this quite a few times, and I wasn't mad. I mean, I thought it was actually kind of funny. I was like, okay, that's you're trying to slow me down. I hiked a lot faster back then than I do today. But what I did not notice at that moment was the lesson that was being handed to me. And it wasn't until 
there was a path off of this trail that we were on and I was walking over to this path and there was this incredible ledge that was there. And I walked up onto this ledge and I'm standing on this ledge and I looked out into this insane valley below. And I do talk a little bit about this in my TED talk as well on forgiveness, but there was this incredible valley below and I was looking out into it and I had this feeling of really overwhelming awe overwhelming wonder. And I felt so freaking small. Like I felt so small in this moment. And I realized how big that this world is and how the trauma that I was living in this, you know, experience with um, the sadness and the anger and everything, how much that it was, it was not a part of me, right? Like I was walking through that. I didn't have to stay in it. Go back to that quote that I used from Dr. Edith Eager. We all walk through the valley of darkness at some point in our life. Do not set up camp there. And how this overwhelm that I was feeling in my marriage, in this, you know, leaving this relationship, this divorce, this trauma that I was, betrayal trauma that I was walking through, that was so insignificant compared to this incredible world, this beauty, this happiness that was before me. And there was a point in that moment where I also realized, just like those rocks that I was carrying, unbeknownst to me, I was carrying so much of other people's stuff that they were putting into my pack, unbeknownst to me. If it was the sadness, the trauma, um, that wasn't, I, I, the, the trauma that I was walking through clearly was like, that was the impact of it. However, I was not the cause. And the lies, the deceit, all of these things, the pain, the sadness that were being handed to me and I was carrying, and yet I was so ready to put them down because all of that pain, like hurt people hurt people, right? The pain that was handed to me was the pain that my former husband was experiencing that he hadn't worked through. So then was being projected onto me through his own the lies, the deceit, the betrayals. And that moment was such, it was such an impactful moment for me because I realized how much that I was done carrying what was not mine. The uh, stories that were handing to me, like the fact that I was having to hold on to secrets that were not mine, right? And I was still playing a part of the secret because I wasn't being, I wasn't able to tell my truth because it was so, the trauma was so deep and I was, felt like I was alone on an island, right? Like if I speak this, if I tell my truth, there were so many times in my own past that people didn't believe me. So are going to people going to believe me now or are they going to judge me because of my truth? And that was the moment, my dear friends, that I put it all down. I was like, I'm done. I don't want to do this anymore. That was the moment that I realized I was getting divorced. That was the moment that I realized that I had no idea how I was going to get out of this darkness, but I was not going to set up camp there. I realized that you know, whatever happened in my future was going to be so much more beautiful than this pain and the sadness that I was standing in at that moment. So thank you, Steve, for putting those big rocks in my pack, because it was such a lesson that then allowed me to, you know, step out of and not carry what I was still carrying. Now, understand that people will continue putting stuff into your pack throughout your life. It's just, this is life. Life is our classroom. We are students. We are teachers. Some of us have PhDs. We're professors because we've had so much stuff that we've had to walk through. And every single time now that somebody tries to put something onto me, project it onto me, it's this constant reminder of, I don't have to carry this. You can set that rock down too. You can set that pain down too. You can set that sadness down too. Does it mean that we don't have to work through it? Of course we do. Of course we do. That's a part of the learning. That's the lesson. And don't carry it for the rest of your life because when you are taking your last breath, you pretty much want to walk out of this life light free, like like really like light, right? Like not carrying everything. You want you want to be filled with freedom and peace and lightness and knowing that, you know, you're not you're not carrying what is not yours right? And that you get to create this life as you choose. And it was a beautiful journey to be on because you put that stuff down along the way. Um, So this is one story that uh, the many stories that I give in my speaking engagements that are so impactful. And I am just, you know what, I'm so grateful to have walked that journey and to have not bypassed the lessons along the way. 
Um, I think every experience, including experiences like this, are there to teach you something. And uh, thankfully, I have learned so much in order to be able to stand on stage now today and to do the work that I do with people in the Grand Canyon, Alaska, the San Juan Mountains, and to be able to witness other people's transformations through the lessons that I've also learned. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing, this journey. And now I'm sitting at, in the Pfister Hotel in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, back where, oh my gosh, let's talk about that for a second. Like literally so many years I taught in Wauwatosa and had so many incredible experiences teaching those kids. Um, many of them who still, they reach back out to me today. It's kind of like coming full circle. And that's a pretty beautiful thing to be able to do. So with that, we have a retreat coming up, by the way, in January, and it's already half filled. It's the end of January. I believe it's the 29th of January through the 2nd. Um, so if you are interested, it's co-ed. It is the Grand Canyon. We do weekly coaching. Um, and so uh, for three months, and there's a five-day retreat in the Grand Canyon where we deep dive and we do, oh, it's so much fun. Everything from meditation to uh, coaching on the trail. Uh, we do Reiki healing, energy healing, and it's incredible. And so if you're interested, message me and let's get you in because we only have four spots left. We These do fill up. I was not going to do another one and the Grand Canyon so beautifully contacted me. They love this work. They love the transformations that happen with people's lives. And so they were like, we have this you know, spot if you want to take it. And I was like, yeah, I'll do it. And so here we are going through another one. And I cannot guarantee that we will be doing these after those because my own life is shifting a little bit, pivoting as I'm getting into speaking more and freaking loving every second of it. Speaking of, speaking of speaking, if you um are, if your organization, your business, uh, conference, anything is looking for a speaker, I talk on this exact thing. It's about making bold moves in your life, um, in your business, in your organizations. And also the, the other message that we really dive into is belonging and, uh, you know, belonging to ourselves first and belonging to the world, creating the impact that we are all here to give in this lifetime. And so I love this. And my speaking engagement that I did a couple of days ago was so much fun and the impact that it had in people's lives. I mean, it was like, oof, so fun watching everybody take so many notes and walking away with their learning too. That's what we do. That's why we're here to, yes, to have the impact in our own life and to share it with the world. So with that, go create impact in your life today. Put your feet on the floor, you know, dedicate yourself uh, and um, commit to yourself and go and create the good that this world needs. I love you. Thank you for being here one more time. Y'all are amazing and uh, spread the word, share this episode with others and this beautiful story that Steve so nicely handed to me. And I picked it up and I learned from it and it's all yours to ripple out yourself. Have a beautiful rest of your day. I love you and um, smile. Go look in the mirror and smile because you are incredible.